Hello, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is Blackpool 2023, day two. Before we do this, can you please like and subscribe and check out onlinemagic.co. That is my online magic membership site. I would say course, but I can't really anymore. 800 videos isn't really a course, is it? It's it's a resource, that's what it is. Um, and people have been saying the most lovely things about it here and, and it's been so lovely to meet up with course members here at Blackpool. So uh, join up, it's a community, that's what it is. And, uh, and I'm very proud of it, it's great. So check out onlinemagic.co. Now, yesterday was one, one of the most inspiring in so many ways, days of the of any magic convention really, not magic wise, but I, this is, would be a very long video if I went into detail, as much detail as I want to, and they're very long videos anyway. So what I will probably do is give you a kind of summary, I'll try, it's very difficult for me, so I just want to bang on, I had such a good day, but I'll try and do a summary, and then when I get back, I'm probably going to talk about each thing individually, especially on the live shows, because I think there's, there's a lot to, to be said, and I want to make you aware of certain people that I'm going to talk about today and kind of tell you how good they are, and I don't think I'm going to get that across this morning. But the day started <laughs> with Dwayne Hill. So Dwayne Hill is someone I don't, I, I kind of observe the, the things that happen on social media and, and the kind of arguments and the fallouts and all that kind of stuff. And I observe it with sometimes a feeling of entertainment. Entertainment's not a feeling. Being entertained is a feeling, isn't it? A feeling of that. But sometimes I just get so exasperated with it all. And, and Dwayne is someone that has kind of popped up on social media. He's kind of courted that a little bit. I think he, he quite likes that kind of the niggling people and it creates, it creates friction. And because of that, and a lot of people know that, he, I was fascinated to see what he did. He has been uh, programmed on as a motivational speaker, and he was very much like that. Now, I'm, because of my work with leadership training and things like that, I love motivational speakers. I love that er area of, again, it is entertainment. And it's been really useful for me in the past. You know, it's, it's, I think it can be very powerful for someone to be on stage and passionately talk about stuff. And I even don't mind the kind of cheesy, more kind of American style of it. And that's very much what Dwayne is. The interesting thing was that Paul Zenon brought him on. And Paul and Dwayne, I've, I've read some of, some of their um, interactions online. They <laughs> get quite full on. So that was a really nice touch, and I really love that. And, and Paul did such a lovely intro, it was very funny. And the, um, yeah, I, I can't say much about it. I can't do that thing. If I said this, it just won't be funny when I say it, but it was just great. Uh, and Dwayne came on to a kind of quite surreal gag to Adele's Hello, was playing for quite some time, and then he walked on with a wig, which I thought, you know, fair enough. And then when he started, I kind of went, you know, he's got content here, he's got something he, he, he looked confident on stage, he had a talk, but then kind of, like so many motivational speakers, it, it became more about the kind of, again, the performance of it. And I thought content-wise, yes, it was great. It was all about marketing. It was all that stuff which was important. There was good stuff there. But I just kind of felt it was the wrong audience for, for, for that. It was very much right, call him Mr. Barney. <laughs> he was still like... You know, you've got a Blackpool audience at half nine in the morning, many of which have been hammered the night before and have had about an hour's sleep, and he's going, what do I tell you? You know, and he's doing call and response, going, I want to hear it, I want to hear it, and you've got people going, oh. and like, <laughs> like it was, it's kind of like in his mind, he had this idea that he was going to go on to this kind of American Tony Robbins, you know, like, you do those things, there's music when you walk on, and everybody's pumped, and it, it just wasn't that, and I just felt like it was, you know, it's kind of know your audience, you know, it would have been so nice for it to be a more gentle, humble experience for me. Um, but, you know, it was, it was entertaining and I can see Dwayne in certain contexts being really strong at that. You know, he was confident on stage, but it, it just, again, it just was, was more funny. And that's not what you want from a motivational speaker. But hats off to him for doing it. 
And then I went to see the Bakore guys do their thing. Now, the, you know, Guy Bavli, you know, they're going to, because I get the pronunciation wrong, Bakor, Bak, Bakore, I think that's what it is. But I did see him the other day, and I was so proud that I'd, I'd asked them when I did a review, and they went, yeah, yeah, thanks for asking. And then when I saw him, I was saying, no, you've said it all wrong, I don't know. But, you know, that. But their mentalism, I've got a load of their stuff, and we're going to do a whole different video when I get back on the products, because it would just take too long. But it's all great. He was doing, well, the first thing I saw him do was this um, whammy gimmick, the whammy board, which is a, a godsend for me, because I can't do nail writers. I've tried, my thumbs are like, they're like hob I've got hobbit thumbs and hobbit toes. They're too thick for anything. I mean, I put a nail right there, it just pings off. I can't even hold it there for a second. And I've tried the various other ones, and I think this might be the answer. And the, the, the oh, I was going to go into the, the, con the, the, uh, the thing itself, but I'll, again, I'll do, I've got one, and we'll do a review on it. But it's just a board that you can use a, a Swami gimmick, a, their version of it on, and it's just, they've, they've answered a lot of questions for me. We've got a lovely peak. I'm not, <laughs> I can't stop talking about the products. No, anyway, their stuff was good. They, but what I loved seeing was, um, uh, Amir Lustig did this, this number prediction as well, which was wonderful. And, uh, and Haim Goldenberg, again, sorry about the pronunciation, did a really, really lovely book test. It was based on Pegasus pages or page, but his different version of it. And this lovely thing about showing someone a page number and then them seeing a different page number and, and removing their memory of what they think they've seen, all that, great. But what I really liked seeing was My Touch. Now, I reviewed My Touch, and it's Guy Bavley's version of PK Touches, and it's very easy to forget how good it looks. It is such a simple, uh, a simple answer to that problem as well, when you've usually got to get two people on stage, there are many different versions of it, but this uses no gimmicks. But when you read it and watch it, and even watch it on screen, you don't quite get how powerful it is. And he's doing this trick and he's told you how it's done and he's got someone on stage and you still can't see him do it. Go back and watch the review of that and I really recommend that. That's, it was just such a joy to see it on stage and fool the hell out of anybody but also entertain, uh, everybody but also entertain people. And I did manage to catch some of Amanda Nepo, Nepo's talk. It's Nepo, I think. So I went straight from Dwayne and it's very interesting because Duane had a very kind of confident talk and was that presence on stage. And I think he was, you know, even in that context. Whereas Amanda, it, it didn't feel as rehearsed, but it felt more human. And I was really enjoying what Amanda was saying and, and her tricks that she showed, but also her, her creative process, which I always love to see people's creative process. And she demonstrated a trick with toilet roll, which was so good and, again, so simple. Not easy to make because she put a lot of work into it. I don't think simple like that. But she was talking about in, in the pandemic when toilet paper was, there was a shortage of toilet roll. And then she did this appearing toilet roll. She had a tube of toilet roll that appeared. And it looked genuinely magical. And then when she talked through it, it was like, what, is that all it is? But then it was like, yeah, but I made the spring. I couldn't do it spring, so I made it. And it, it one of those really inspiring talks that made you kind of go, okay, I've been so, in so many situations where I can't find a thing and I can't find it on Amazon, so I just give up. And she's like, no, you just make it out of, out of chicken wire and do this and it's fine. And I think people were really enjoying her, just being her, being herself on stage. And yes, there was the odd moment where it was, oh yeah, what's next? But, it would, but that, I so much prefer that, someone just being honest and a little bit vulnerable and talking about their struggles on stage than someone coming on and kind of, you know, telling you can nail it, all that kind of stuff. So uh, really recommend you check her stuff out. I haven't seen a lot of her online content and I've had a look now and it's great. So uh, links will be below at some point. And then I had a choice. I went to the Bear Pit close-up. And if you don't know what that is, basically you, you have different stations and people doing close-up magic and then they move to the next station. So you get small audiences around tables and the performers move to the next table so the audience don't have to move and you get different performers every 10, 20 minutes or whatever. That's a, my, usual, my usual pithy um, uh, summary of that. And I, you know, it's great, that is, and it's brilliant, but I've just seen so much of that and it's really crowded. And I went to watch a bit of it, I thought, I just 
feel like I can't get much out of this. Everybody was brilliant, and I'll put bits of footage in of the people as I'm talking now, um, because they deserve a lot of respect for getting in front of that audience and doing what they do. It's, a, it's an intimidating audience, a lot of magicians, and, and I had a quick look at everybody and thought, everybody's doing great. And that was great, but uh, 10 minutes there and I went, I, I want to see Artem. Artem um, Shukin, FISM manipulation winner. And I was like, do I want to go and see that because I don't do manipulation? And how glad am I? It was one of the highlights of the convention for me. He, his story about, you know, I mentioned it on yesterday's uh, video about kind of coming over and not being able to go back to Russia and trying to stay and, and train and compete and work on his act and do all these things was so inspiring. And it, again, it was inspiring because he was telling a story from a very human level. And, the, and then when he demonstrated his work and showed videos of when he was rehearsing and telling us again with a PowerPoint about his, his rehearsal process and the, the work you have to put into this. You know, he said he did this a thousand times before he was kind of feeling happy with it. It was like a version again of the thing that I saw at the beginning of the day, but just done with so much heart and so much experience and someone just telling their story. And that's the difference. Again, then he showed his, his work, his actual routines and said this is how, but that looked absolutely stunning and mind blowing. But the, again, the difference is you've got someone telling a story, their story. And that's where the motivation, the motivation is built into that story. They don't have to kind of go, I'm going to say this. It's kind of, it's just there. And again, he had PowerPoint, but it was all, I took pictures of everything. It was just absolutely wonderful. And I, I said to Helen, my partner, when we walked out, I, I feel so inspired. I've got a show in a month. And it, that, just seeing him tell that story uh, changed my state and, and kind of, it's something that I'll kind of carry with me. As will be Andy Nyman's talk, which... Andy Lime's always going to be good, but he did a, a, an hour of, again, telling his story. Uh, and uh, so I got, <laughs> I got uh, Morton Christensen's there. He's, just, <laughs> he's so lovely. <laughs> you got, you got, I can't walk, he can't walk around me, walk past me without me wanting to give him a cuddle. <laughs> he's so lovely. Uh, anyway, um, what was I doing? Yes, Andy Nyman. Uh, again, Telling his stories, telling stories about Darren Brown. I said Darren Brown's motivation, but more Darren Brown's process and who he is and their meetings together. And this lovely, lovely, lovely thing about Cat's Deli. The talk was called That's It, right? That's all, sorry. And, uh, and he talked about Cat's Deli in, in New York and their slogan is That's All, about how they got their slogan. And it, it was just the most wonderful tie up to that, lovely callback at the end. Uh, but he, again is someone I could just listen to for hours and hours and I think a lot of people say that it was it was I can't I, I want to tell you about all the, all the all the stuff that was in it but I can't but just you know if, if you ever are one of those people that you know loves your car moves and all that kind of stuff and you see Andy Lyman who's he just go and watch and do um, go to the London Magic Convention which is uh, Andy's convention uh, that I have not been able to get to yet every time I I'm, I'm getting a ticket, I've got a gig and I've got a ticket, but it's, you know, that's where you will catch him, so, so keep an eye out for that. And then I missed a few things, because um, I'm old and I have to go and have a little sleep, and came back for Javier Mortimer. Um, I was really looking forward to it, and then it started, and I said to my girlfriend, we've really come to the right thing here, because it was that, or Greg Leeson, I didn't want to, and it was, I was really loving it. And then about 20 minutes in, it just completely lost me, and I couldn't really regain it after that. That happened twice that evening, actually. He is brilliant at what he does. His mime, I love mime, I love classic mime. It, in that first 20 minutes, I, with the stuff with shadows, and he's got animated shadows that he's working with and interacting with, are just so magical, so wonderful, and then he did one thing that lost me, and I'm, I, and I'm still really conflicted about why. He said, now we're going to have Bell come on and do the sexiest card trick in the world. Or, or that, that wasn't his exact word. This, this, it was the sexiest card trick. That's what he said. And what followed was a very well-performed manipulation act by somebody that looked amazing, that was in very kind of 
revealing costume. And I'm not, you know, I've, I've worked in burlesque nights and it's, I'm not anti that. But what really did it for me was all the people around me, it wasn't like people were being leery, but there were responses that were responses to somebody's body and the sexuality of someone and not the work that she was doing. And again, I'm not making any judgments about whether that was the right or wrong thing, but for me, it, it felt weird and it felt odd. And I talked to a couple of people after that and it also felt odd to them. And I, for me, it, was a, it kind of cheapened it for me and I couldn't really get it back after that. And then there was, again, there was some great stuff, the, the magic, and it was all, you know, all the, 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 the skill of it all was stunning. But then there was a narrative in it that didn't quite work for me and it felt like, and there were a couple of, again, very impressive kind of illusions in it and there was a thing with an iron at the end that didn't quite, well, I kind of, and do you know what it felt like? It felt like, you know, when you want, I love Marvel films, but what Marvel films used to do more, and they still do it a bit, is that they, they catch you for the whole film and then every time the film would end with a crowd-pleasing fight and every time that fight starts, I kind of lose interest. Oh, we know what's going to happen here. I've kind of, I love the first three quarters. And now we're just fin finishing with a, with a big fight that happens at the end of all Marvel films. And it felt like I had this lovely thing that I was really engaged with and emotionally connected to, and then it just went, and then there was a couple of crowd-pleasing sort of effects at the end, which, which again, didn't really work for me. Now, people came out of that and absolutely adored it, so that's my own opinion. Um, but I'd be really interested to see what other people felt. But the feeling in the audience that I was getting, a, you know, the, there were people laughing at moments where they shouldn't have been yeah so i'm not gonna I'm not gonna labor that but but it didn't really work for me and again with the oh by the way when i said the show didn't work for me do get a chance to see it because there's some incredibly imaginative stuff in there and he's clearly someone that has put so much work into what he does so i loved it up to that point and a bit of the stuff in the middle the one the, the com there was a competition in the evening i think i might try and do a separate video on i might do on some of the performers because there were so many performers i can't go for each one because we're going to be an extra half an hour and i can see we're on like you know 23 oh gosh uh yeah a lot of minutes so far it was a competition and again i felt inspired after that show there's a wonderful routine uh with acrylic balls contact juggling balls and i'm a contact juggler so I, I i've seen people do like vanishes and productions of contact juggling balls before but they never really looked that great to me. But, but, but he was just, it, was, it looked wonderful. And using water, there was this whole water thing, the water coming from the ceiling. And I'm really sorry I didn't get all the names of everybody, but I'd shoot these first thing in the morning, and that was late last night. Uh, and the opening act was a version, almost cups and balls with cocktail shakers. I've seen a lot of that stuff, but this was the best version of that I've ever seen. I will try and be more specific. Um, but as a summary, uh, later, but as a summary, I just thought it was a, a way stronger show than I thought. And I'd seen some people that had come out of the early show and they said they didn't really like it. And I, I couldn't really fault it. I thought it was great and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so that was that. And in the evening it was Beat the Wand, which was a whole mess and uh, <laughs> just an entertaining hour. Uh, but I was so exhausted by then. So when I should have gone to bed after that, I went to the Ruskin until like 2.30 in the morning and saw some just great stuff. You know, Perseus Akamanis, sorry again about pronunciation, showed me and Helen, my girlfriend, a beautiful card trick. Just a, he's, you know, he's one of those people that, for him, meaning in magic is so important and it was really beguiling. His, his connection with what he was doing just felt very genuine and wasn't kind of, you know, shoehorned him. And this is just at the bar. And then one of my favorite magicians is Tobias Gostel. And he showed, again, me some stuff. And I was, you know, I don't get like this a lot. And I was, I was getting Helen over like, you've got to see this. And uh, everything he does, I saw him a, a year, year or so ago at the session doing, doing work that was just as imaginative, but isn't released yet. And I'm like, Tobias, when are you going to release it? We need this, this stuff on the market. And it was, um, he said, like, I don't know, it'll be sometime. <laughs> because we, you know, we really do need this creativity. I've been working with optics again, you know, the, the vanishing mobile phone routine that he's got. And I tell you what, it's, it's a difficult thing, but I just cannot leave that alone. It's, do check out Tobias's work. Um, I'm not going to go into everybody that I met and give it all just gone forever, but uh, that was exceptional for me. Right, 
thank you very much. That was, I know it's rambly, I know it's all over the place, but that's kind of the nature of these things. This is just, you know, one shot, and there will be edits in this because I got all confused at one point. Uh, but if you want any more detail on anything, do let me know, and I will try and get a list of the people in that competition last night, the one it was called, and the 30 grand prize, you know? There's a lot at stake. Um, and I'll go through them for you if, if it kind of feels right to do that at some point. And I will also, of course, be doing a load of stuff about the, the products that are here. But that's a whole new video, and I'll do that afterwards as well. Right, have a good one. Thank you very much. Hey, if you're still here, well done. Uh, my name is Steve Fortner, this is Real Magic Review, and do please uh, go and check out onlinemagic.co. Without that, there is no this. Uh, so, if you, and again, people are loving it. The people coming up to me that are on the course have just said the loveliest things. So do please check it out and, uh, and share this if you think that would be useful for anyone. All right, take care. Have a great one. Cheers.